Welcome back to the International 3, ladies and gentlemen. The prelims continue here. It's now Dignitas versus Navi, game number two. And Navi is looking very strong. They take game one, they do it against a rather questionable draft from Dignitas. I'm cor of course, I'm LD, and he's Lumi of Beyond the Summit. You ready to cast birthday boy? Mm -hmm. By the way, guys, it is Lumi's birthday, so be sure to wish him a very happy birthday. That was Blitz. No, uh, no better way to uh, have a bir birthday present than casting fucking 12 hours of Dota. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty fucking awesome. Fucking awesome. Actually, yeah. We can't say fucking anymore because having Matt's out of the tournament. <laughs> we have no good reason to yeah. say it. That's for sure. So for this game, Navi will be on the radiant side. <laughs> Dignitas on the dire. I. And Navi had first pick in game one, I believe, and they get it here again. They go for a life stealer. Dignitas, same bands from them. I think similar bands from Navi. And I guess the difference is Dignitas get an OD. But Navi are going to respond by immediately picking up a Razor to deal with that mid. Yeah, I actually want to see this matchup. I hear people talking about the matchup all the time where you level up your passive a couple of times. So when he astro you he takes damage he gets slow and then you could use your link to kind of zone him out yeah i think the idea is that you basically skip the nuke because that costs mana and right you just you or a lot of mana and you just you steal his damage and like you said you you purge him whenever he casts astral and then you just go and right click him yep i mean as i mean ot without the ability to steal too many astros like he's actually not that powerful he still has high base damage that's that's for sure but i think razor could actually take him toe-to-toe -to -toe. the other thing to look for is that navi loves to take the bottom or the Windrunner when they're running on the Radiant, and uh, Funnick likes to go in with it, so we'll, we'll probably see that again. There also is a Prophet, and OD is a pretty inactive, immobile hero with mi minimal counter push, so if you want to spread the map, go for pickoffs and push, sure. that's a good they one definitely well. can. So Prophet's an option for Navi, I think that's something Dignitas will either ban or pick for themselves pretty early on. Uh, draft's still very fresh and early. Dignitas, the one thing that's kind of rough about picking OD Visage is you've pretty much tipped your hand in terms of how you want to, in terms of what the lanes are going to be. Because you know Visage will be in one of the side lanes, you know OD's going mid, pretty much. You can try and throw him into a side lane to dodge that matchup versus Razor, but Razor's going to do even better in the tri lane. Yeah, we've seen like players and teams using the OD on the one roll, yeah. and it just fails every time. Like I've never actually seen it do well. So I've seen it work before, but in the games where it worked, I feel like a lot of other heroes would. It have wasn't. Too. It wasn't the OD, right? So we yeah. do see a Bane elemental being banned out here. Obviously, Bane last game was doing a lot of havoc. Although I felt like it was the Enigma. It was the life stealer of last game that did a ton of work. And it was also Dignitas picking themselves into a corner. Mm -hmm. Already, they have a much better carry to deal with life stealer in OD before he gets items. Out can deal with Lifestyle, but he does need quite a few mm -hmm. items to do it. OD, you've always got Astral to rely on. If he goes in on anybody, one of the best kiting spells in the game. It's like having Disruption, except you have it on a carry. <laughs> Although, um, it lasts a little bit longer. There's some you know, significant differences. Uh, that, that's very true, uh, but in terms of just disengaging. Yeah. Also, at the same time, one thing to kind of talk a little bit more about the Astro is that he's actually pretty decent against Life Slayer. If you Astro him, you could drop the nuke on him, and there's no way he's dodging with Rage or BKB or anything inside that. So, so if he is low, you can definitely finish You can him. Astro and then bam, go for the kill. So that's that's something. I, I saw that yet, uh, today, I think OD pulling a Void out and then using his ultimate when he was trapped under the Astro because there's no chance of uh, backtrack of anything of that sort. So it's actually a pretty smart way to use uh, using in conjunction with your ultimate. So we'll see a Rubik ban from Dignitas. They get rid of two of the strong Kuroki supports, the Bane, the Rubik. Mm -hmm. uh, Kuroki still has some options here, though. We've seen him play Lina. Yep. We've seen him play Jakiro. He's a pretty versatile support player. You can't really ban him out. You can try and limit his uh, offense, though. I think trying to ban supports out is generally not a really good idea because most support players have a very wide um, hero pool. Unless you're trying to ban out like the niche special supports. Like, for example, you ban out Sand King versus Extinct. Or you ban out Visage against Net. Those are the heroes that you want to ban out. I think that's what they're doing, though, because Kuroki. Yeah, is that's a, beast a fair on point. That's a fair point, yeah. and it's not going to accomplish too much. Unfortunately. It's a little, it's a little weird though to see the team that ha is up against Life Slayer banning Bane. Because if anything, normally you go. And oh, pick they that. they love Bane. Yeah. I mean, also the Razor pick is somewhat of a, I guess, a denial because Life Slayer, somewhat gets countered by Razor. We've seen it quite a bit in the past. Now Alk picked up by Dignitas, so. We've seen them go Alk mid every time they run it. I think it's four times in a row now, but with the OD picked as well, maybe it's an Alk in a tri lane. Problem though is if it is an Alk in a tri lane, Alk in a tri lane is not going to do well against a Razor, or and potentially could struggle against the Lifestyle. I mean, I really dislike the fact that if Alchemist goes safe lane, AI is playing it, and we're going to see Snaking playing OD. 
Staking strikes me as a player that's very, very aggressive. And how aggressive can you actually get with OD, right? You don't want to force yourself in and do what? Right click? So, uh, I don't know. It, if Snaking's playing OD, it reminds me of Yamate playing OD. In theory, you know, he's a great solo mid, he could run that hero, but it just doesn't fit the player, if that makes any sense. Yeah, they'll go for a Puppy Chen now. So, one of the better heroes to press or Visage. We've heard Winter talk a lot about how the jungler, the jungle heroes are some of the best in the game to deal with the Visage, and we won't rehash that again. But Profit picked up by Dignitas in reply. I mean, I, th I figured if it was out there, they'd go for it, but I'm actually surprised to see it slip through to the fourth pick, because I thought it was something Navi would consider as well, but they choose to go for the Chen. Yeah. Very little, like, real stuns coming out here from uh, Team Dignitas. Same for Navi. They have zero real stuns. I mean, they don't really have heroes that they really need to lock down, right? Yeah. I mean, you want to keep an OD pinned down as you kill them. Alchemist, perhaps. You're not dealing with things like Weaver or Storm. Uh, whereas Lifestealer, if you don't lock him down, he's... We saw what Havos did last game. So I'm I'm somewhat concerned. Um, I, I I think Navi needs stuns too, though. Having zero stuns against two hard carries and that's, a profit. That's true. You can't stop profit from split pushing. They'll they'll need some, and we'll see what they go for here. Shadow Demon's available, but it's kind of a an underwhelming support pick. In what about ways. Windrunner? We talked about a the yeah. Entry. I I think this is where they would go for something like the stronger mid and late game, something like a Windrunner. Okay. Um. So oh, there you go. There you go. So, but that's probably the Funic Windrunner. So we still don't know what Kuroki's playing, or it could um, be for the Funic Windrunner. Yeah, I, I assume it is. If they, I guess if they really wanted to be greedy, they could go back for something like that Marana, run the Marana farm in the Ancient, sure. and for Funic, and then the Windrunner for... Or the other way around. Rookie. I mean, yeah. both those are, are pretty interchangeable in a sense. Support Marana. Yeah. I see it in the past. Fluff and sub TI2. How did that go? How many times did we see that? Did well in the group stage. <laughs> did well in the group stage. <laughs> then the real games came. Yeah. <laughs> well, they didn't play uh, Potom those games, but... That's besides the point. Uh, we have one more band coming out from Navi. It feels like their lineup is very well-rounded. Um, Team Ding the Toss strikes me as a lineup that can farm quite a bit, right? Nature's Prophet, Alchemist, this lineup could go very late. It can go late. It's pretty strong mid-game as well. I think their laning stage is just very inactive. It's not that they can't, they can't get kills and they can't win their lanes, but you have a Prophet who's probably not doing much until he hits six. And I, I don't think we're going to see Na'Vi give away an easy level 6 to that Prophet in, a, in an offlane the way that we saw Zenith do. If he's going to find level 6, it'll be in the jungle. It'll be much harder for Universe to get it. So he'll be inactive for a while. OD is a very inactive mid. And then, then you have Alk Visage. Actually, Universe did it okay last time. Like, he, he was able to join the fight. Gave up the first blood. He did join a few fights, and they got a couple of kills. But yeah. he didn't have his fast Midas. He didn't. He wasn't... In the games against Zenith... He was, it felt like he was controlling the games. He the, wasn't effective. Like, he, he was okay in lane, and he wasn't effective. I imagine he's going to have an easier lane time. Well, as easy as it was the last game, because Puppy's going to be in the jungle again. So Dignitas will go th for something that a lot of the North American teams have been favoring, but especially them, which is that support bench. Mm -hmm. Minus Armor stack is now online for them. They have early access to Roshan. They've got a very potent mid-game lineup. I actually favor them if they buy a lot, if they get to the mid-game in yeah. good shape. Yeah, well, whether D they can Depending there. on this last pick. Yeah. Who knows what Navi goes for here. But. I mean, you know Navi's going to be playing somewhat passively with the Windrunner. She's going to be ancient jungling. So with that knowledge, perhaps you could take advantage, perhaps on the long lane. Now we're going to see Kuro Kuro Kuroki Earthshaker. Or is that Kuroki Chen? I mean, Puppy's chance is unparalleled, so I think I think he's going to be playing the Chen. I think it's just silly not to have him play. There you like, go. Sure, you could do it just to show that you can. I'm sure Kuroki's actually a pretty good Chen, but mm -hmm. Puppy Chen. They'll stick with the, what, what they know. They get a lot of AoE lockdown with this Earthshaker, and are there, I mean, are there any shenanigans they'd be up to with Fissure, or just a strong AoE support, you think? I mean, if you line up a good Fissure, you could definitely set up some Shackle Shots. It's such a long, long-range spell. Um, and no surprises here. It's going to be that Funic Ancient Jungling stuff that we've seen from him for weeks now. They started it in China, and they've continued since then. So when they do this, their first destination is three or four heroes in this area. They always make sure to set up some good wards for him so he sees any incoming smoke ganks. They ensure the enemy team doesn't ward the Ancients. Uh, so instead of going into the enemy jungle, instead of going into their jungle, they just focus on protecting their Ancients. And yeah. you already see him eating the trees. Yeah, he's going to be... Well, he could just power shot and cut all the trees, but why waste mana when you could just use your tank, uh, Quelling Blade to do it? Generally, he doesn't even pick up the Quelling Blade so early. Uh, he want to make sure that it, it... Well, they secure this ward first, for example. 
Yeah, um, which they they do with ease. Mm -hmm. Dignitas aren't a very. They're not the. I guess they're an okay level one lineup, but they're not that great, so they can't really contest this too much anyway. Uh, we'll see what they Although, look to do for the lanes. If they could send a couple of trees and perhaps block it off here for the first spawn, that wouldn't be yeah, too bad. They should, and they should really know that Navi likes to do this because Navi's shown it a lot. But I guess the thing is, if you're doing that, then Universe just isn't slowing any of the supports down. He's not slowing down the jungle Chen. Mm -hmm. He's not slowing down the pulls of the Earthshaker. So doing that really hurts their other. Mm. It really <laughs> frees up the rest of Navi. They're paying the hell out of Funic, so they definitely know he's doing it. Well, now they know, but the problem is there's a ward up for Funic. He's got high ground position here. It won't be nearly as easy to contest. And on that note, we'll introduce the teams. Your Eastern European squad, Funic on the Windrunner, Puppy, the Chen, the solo mid will be Dendi on the Razor. Towards the jungle, we have Kuroki handling the Earthshaker as the support. Kavost on that Beast Carry Lifestealer. He is still on a roll. I think we inspired him, Lumi. I think we did. <laughs> on, the, on the side of Team Dignitas, you've got your Awfully Nature's Prophet. That'll be Universe. The North American squad, Snake King, your solo mid OD. They really do want to shut down this Ancient stack. Oh, oh too late. They're one second too late with the Observer. The first Ancient spawn, way too sexy on the Visage. Fogged on the Enchantress. Or, sorry, not the Enchantress. The uh, Vengeful Spirit. And that leaves, last but not least, Safe Lane AUI 2000 Elk. Yeah, being late on that one means... Who cares if it's going to be blocked for a couple minutes? These dragons take like a while to farm anyway, so Funnings is going to be set for the next 3-4 minutes. Meanwhile, back in the mid lane though, Snake King should have a huge advantage matchup here. Well, I say huge. Just I don't know. I, yeah. I mean, I, maybe at the early, but I think the results of most people who have seen the matchup have said that generally Razor seems to be winning this. So okay. we'll see. And I, I, as a player, I would give oh, Dendi yeah. the edge. I'll so. take Dendi any day over Snake King. But I, I, despite being a good American. It's hard not to take Dendi there. I mean, Dendi's Team America. Apparently, according to Grand Grant, I'm a race trader. A race trader. So, <laughs> why why are you a race trader? Because <laughs> I, I I I like some of the Chinese teams. I see. That's okay though. I can live with Grand Grant's flames. If he's flaming you, you're doing something right. <laughs> yeah, mid lane kind of passive. Uh, let's actually check out how we're doing on on the bot lane. Havosa CSing against nobody, and uh, are these uh, trains doing enough? Or are they kind of just? Uh, so for the time being, he's actually getting fissure blocked when he tries to throw them in, I guess. Uh, has he been able to get off any poles? We haven't actually seen yet, I guess. He's actually blocking these poles, so that's very nicely micro. Although one thing that he has to definitely worry about is that once there's face boots up on the Havos, a single fissure coming out from the fog, he just face up to you into open moons, and you're dead. Like, no questions asked. Yeah, and if he does dive the tower, then the question is, can anyone on Dignitas really punish that? And I don't think so. There's, there's no Shadow Demon to TPN. Fogged, only level 2, so... Havos should have his phase boots in, I don't know, the next minute or so. Mm -hmm. And then, then you'll have to be very careful if you're Universe. Again, this is what I'm talking about when we look at how Zenith played against Dignitas versus how Navi is, is they don't just give away stuff for free. Like, Zenith gave away a free level 6 to an offlane profit. Navi's not going to do that. Yep, meanwhile, we do have uh, Way Too Sexy setting up a gank, but I do believe Navi is completely aware of this. Somebody's watching this the, particular ward. And the problem is, like, how do you actually gank this? You, if, you, if you go for mid, that's fine, but you can't gank the Windrunner when she's across the cliff. No, I think, you're, I think they're trying to gank mid, but, like, this ward. It's actually pretty risky, too, because they don't know where Puppy is. In theory, Funnick could be coming this direction, but Dendi, well, he'll posture towards mid. Seems like he knows they're smoked and wanted to reveal they it. They definitely do know he's smoked. They, they pinged it out, but... Okay. uh. Yeah, there is an Observer and a Sentry, yeah. so he should know. And they'll try and steal a big dragon. That would be a pretty big steal. I mean, they're, uh, it's a little bit too high for it right now. It, it hurts a lot. Yeah, <laughs> look. It's for 64 damage. That's why you don't tank the hit. That's why this jungle, you kind of pull it back and forth. Back and forth we go. You don't tank it. Uh, Kawa, apparently we don't have in-game sound here. I'm not sure if that's Ooh, accurate. They're but coming they're wrapping around, around now Funic. on Funic. He gets Magic Missile up. He's taking a decent amount of damage. He's got one run. Wind run and on the run. And that's why sometimes not getting the power shot at level 1 to cut down these trees are very, very important. Because if you did that, he would have basically died there. In fact, now Puppy's going to come around here and travel out to, to jungle this particular Ancient. Guys, apparently the sound is working, so if it's not working for you, try refreshing. And they are going to get the dragon. They don't kill Funic. So overall, huge victory for Navi. And that's the thing, is this Windrunner strat, on the Radiant side especially, it's just very hard to actually punish it. Mm -hmm. And while they're trying to punish it, Puppy's getting a lot out of the jungle. It's the same story as game one, where Navi just seemed to be getting a lot more off the lanes. I mean, this is, like, you're not running support Zeus. There's no surprise here. Navi's been running this kind of strat for quite a bit. Kuroki's actually dropping quite low. Maybe Nature's Prophet could do something. No, Fidger's going to ward him off, get a couple of CS. In fact, now c killing these treants as well. For the time being, there's an Astral mid, and that Razor is 16-9. and nine. 
Snakehand's actually losing his lane here. I mean, well... It's tough, because look at what Denny does. He just steals your damage, he dives you under tower, and even just stealing that 25 or so, now they're about even. Well, the one thing that we need to mention is that 430, Alchemist has a... Hanamitis. And while that's happening, the, the first blood bottom. Yep. We do miss it. We're trying to fix some audio issues here, I guess, guys, so sorry about that. But Havost, along with Kroki, combined to kill off Universe. And it's that safe lane... Already phase boots up. Right, that's life that's kind of not much you can do. Fissure, phase boot walk in, open wounds, easy kill. That's that's as expected, and I guess, I guess uh, Universal was a little slow to react to that. Man, uh, look at like what does they can actually do against this? Denny's almost always gonna have mana because this static link takes almost nothing to cast. Forty and it's level three oh, already. Jesus, he's just diving here for the kill. Neither two more hit. Uh, he didn't have a face boot or something like that, so wasn't gonna go for it. And now we see why Navi when they picked OD they banned Razor. This is why. Very difficult matchup. So understanding it and doing everything they can to deal with it. Unfortunately, Dignitas getting caught kind of with their pants down. The tier 1 top's under a lot of pressure. Three heroes for Dignitas trying to take that first tower. But the thing, Funic's only level 2. And that is the other way you can try and punish that ancient jungling is if you just push super early. He can't really do much, but... I mean, he's going to get leveled then, right? He's now already, he gets the level. Yeah. So it's like, a, no matter what you do, you win. But this is one way to try and punish it, at least. And as soon as a Dignitas ran past the tower, already Puppy sending a Chen Creep to help out. I mean, if this Chen Creep dies, who cares? You get a little bit of EXP, but Woodman is going to get a little bit more. Chen Creep alone is actually going to delay this push by quite a bit. Yeah, they're pushing the top lane and the Centaur. Just drawing the creeps off as much as possible. They just don't have a good pushing tri lane. There's nothing really to do a lot of damage to the tower. They have the Aura. It's decent. There's no familiars up yet. And even if they take it, they're sitting three heroes in the lane and they're not pulling. And guess what Navi's doing? Puppy's jungling. He's already level five. This is just so good for Navi. Yeah, I mean, I just feel like Navi's just outplaying Dignitas. Um, and it's not even close how, how much you're outplaying it. Havos, by the way, level seven with Fade Speed. Light Team Steam actually pick up a uh, teleport scroll. If there's some big dive for uh, Woodman up top, maybe you actually get up a couple kills. Now more damage being stolen by Snake King. One to zero, they're leading in terms of kills. They're already up by 2k gold and 2.5k experience. If you're Dignitas, I think you can. You don't feel comfortable here, but you do have the absolute free farm, Hand of Midas Alchemist. Uh, he had this really fast as well. So go if they want to just try and win by out farming Navi, they do have some ways to do it. They have profit to split push. He's still getting decent levels. Four for Universe and seven minutes is not too bad against Phase Boots Lifestealer. I don't feel like they're nearly as out of it as they were in game one, because their draft is a lot more stable. But at the same time, OD is not really a do-something hero until much later, so... And you those... pick him to win his lane, and he's not winning He's not lane. winning those lanes, and starting the mid-game team fight, like, what is actually Snaking gonna do? He's gonna have a 4 staff for the team, or maybe a mech, depending what build he goes for. He's just not gonna be as effective as Dendi, who probably is gonna charge in, link up somebody, and start going to work. I don't think Dignitas, two games in a row, I don't think they're farming for mid-game, they're farming for ultra late. That's why we see a 4 minute and 30 second Hannah Midas on the Alchemist, who is maxing that Grievous Greed. And knowing AEI, he's last hitting pretty much everything. Yeah, so super fast Midas, what do you go for here? Uh, with your OD having such a bad start? Shadow Blade, apparently. I think the Shadow Blade. But top lane and here. Best bomb on Kuroki. Fissure blocks there, but he get, gets passed an awkward way around the tower. Shackle Still running shot. in a beautiful shackle. Now Havos comes out. Surprise, it's me, and I'm out for blood. AUI slowed up. He throws out the stun. It won't be enough. Down he goes. I mean, that was with the path thing being super awkward. It yeah. should have been way easier, but still they get the kill. Nice Shaco here between Windrunner and OG. And the funny part is when you see an Earthshaker coming in, you don't expect them to be infested. I mean, this is what <laughs> Who Navi... Does that? This is what, what Navi is doing all day. Like, <laughs> Who they, does that? They just TP the support. Navi does that. Yeah, they, they TP the support with the infested life slayer because get, he could just TP back to the mid lane and he will do so right now to focus on Denby. Here comes Havos. Havos right turning on the Fog. Fox going to be dead. And now Drum's going to get popped on Havos. Shaco shot onto two. And all of these guys, they are so dead. Dignitas... Snaking on the run, but uh, yep. it's a massacre. It's a triple, triple kill, and Dendi is out of control. So too is Havos. Sure, you can angle for ultra late game, but you'd better get through the early and mid game. And giving up five kills now down by five k gold and five k experience. That is no way to get to the late game. Well, what does Signal Toss do now? Meanwhile, Puppy's going for some action of his own universe. He's running from Chen. The three position just can't deal with this jungler. He tries to TP out. He will get away with a well placed sprout. Nicely done. Yep. Still, though, like you said, they're using Infest really creatively. A lot of teams will just use it later on. You've got your typical Life Bombs, Profit TPs, your Storm Spirit Ganks, but 
this is a very different way to play it, and it's catching Dignitas completely by surprise. Yeah, both uh, Navi. In fact, this is how Fnatic used it against Navi yesterday in their 2 win over Navi. So ah, you're right. Navi has been picking up a little bit of uh, out of the other teams that have been beating them. So. I mean, they're evolving. They're getting better. Still, there is a ray of hope. Shadowblade's coming out for AUI 2000. He might be able to find some solo kills around the map. There's no gem up yet for Navi, thankfully. Uh, but, while well, I'm talking about his Shadowblade, look who else might be going for one. Mr. Funnick. Already a Claymore up. Dang. So, do the Shadowblade? I guess you're running kind of a, not the strongest late game hero in a mid for Dendi. You're running the Razor, so maybe they want to give themselves more options here. Get a Shadowblade up on the Windrunner. I mean, I don't think Dendi needs to be really that... Oh, uh, meanwhile, Echo Slam on to Kuroki in the middle of the fray, though. They've lost one for one. I'm gonna back off. Getting themselves back on the board, attack. was it Snake King that picked up the kill? No, it was way too sexy on his visage. <laughs> it's actually double Shadow Blade. They're going for one on Dendi as well. Shadow Blade Razor is like an old school classic. You start your you start your static link, and then and Shadow, Blade, Shadow Blade, Blade And the ult still affects people, Eye of the Storm. It actually, his old ult used to just damage everything in AoE. It was like a mi mi mini Radiance, and that was like the super cheesy, easy mode pub way to play him. But I think this is pretty effective, and they just Dignitas, they have pretty poor and underleveled supports, and buying double Shadow Blade puts immense pressure on them. They're going to have to buy mass sentries, which means no early urns, no early bracers, much easier for the Havos to kill. Yeah, the thing that we haven't talked about too much is that why is there a Navi courier just... Alright, it's just buying things with the Sly Shop. Now it's just going to the enemy... Dyer's oh, it's going to Havos. I was like, what's attack. going on right now? It's, yeah, <laughs> you're getting the teams mixed up, I think. <laughs> it's just delivering his armlet, but... Okay. Now, Dendi going in mid lane, snaking, will Astral and look to run. But that the purge, damage lasts, Jesus. the purge lasts long enough to give him like an extra 80 Ooh, damage. They're walking up the hill, stomp number one, stomp number two, and Dendi just shredding fog the part. You can't do that. Not at nighttime with Navi having multiple heroes off the map. The vision isn't there. Snake in another Astral. He's trying to run. Forced to TP out because Avost is with the party. Big Fissure from Kuroki. Two more hit the deck. You can't run up this hill at night. I mean, it feels like Dignitas are just feeling very much under the gun and pressing because They've been a lot more patient than that before today. Mm -hmm. I mean, or perhaps before this game even. I mean, playing against Navi and playing against any other team is a big difference. So yeah, exactly. I feel like it's getting to them a little bit because Dignitas is normally pretty, like like we talked about all their great movement on their supports, not making many mistakes. Mm -hmm. These are some mistakes that we were not seeing from them. Yeah, not at all. And some of them are unforced. Like Navi has forced a couple of mistakes, but that was just completely unforced there. AI two thousand. So close to death that he does not know it yet. Yeah, he does get a Shadow Blade. Even if he dies, 12 minute Shadow Blade Midas is still pretty damn good on an Alk, but Havost is actually out farming it. <laughs> He's already got an armlet up, and the Shadow Blades are coming out now. Windrunner picks hers up. Dendi should have his soon. And then, then they can just go and kill anyone. Okay, I mean, when you have Max Grievous Greed and practically free farm with a hand of Midas, and you're down by 1200 gold to Havost, how does that even work? One zero five because you have thirty less CS and he's one zero and five and he has and you're towers. zero one and zero two towers on top and of and towers yeah just... and now universe universe hit by one nuke now oh, with two hero what? shackle even better it's a two what? for one special Navi just got a deal and they didn't even realize it and now an echo slam from Kuroki two more hit the oh, deck oh they see it, they see AI TP and do they have detection that's a question right now they are they are rolling so hard they are making one of the best teams in Group A look silly right now. Well, maybe it's just Navi and everybody else in Group A. Is it? Yeah. Uh, Shackle shot right they there. They did lose 2-0 to Fnatic, but apparently Fnatic is struggling right now against DK. So we'll talk about that more after this game ends. Either way, how it turns out. But Kroki looking for a fissure now. Damage being stolen from Dendi. No, they're going to go back in. The OD, the first one down. Now the chase is on for Puppy. Simultaneously, Dendi, he takes all AUS damage, and then he uses it against Way Too Sexy. Two dead. And oh, by the way, look what Havost is doing. He's just going high ground at 13 minutes. So, hey guys. He's going to dive universe into the tier 4 towers. Is there a swap? No, the teleport canceled. But Havost is in fest. They can't kill him. Yeah, they can't. Jesus. I think he's going to wait for his cooldown. Yeah, he's going to just come back out. Meanwhile, tier 1 is going to drop top. Tier 2 is going to fall down. I just want to go back here. If you could put your camera here for this shackle shot. There was one hero here. And there was one hero here. And the shackle came this way. By the way, there's like 20 trees here. But it's like, nope. But that's the way Shackle works. Yeah, Shackle, hero selection. It on, prioritizes yeah. heroes over trees and over other units. It, it's just so lousy to see it like that. It's like, bam. 
because you're like, oh, I'm going to get shackled to a tree. I'll be fine. Nope, that's not the case. Now Funic fishing for another shackle. He's going to line up too. Fissure's there. This is too easy. This is not fair. I feel like I'm watching them go bowling. Snake King on the run. Dendy's got his ult available. Beautiful body block from Funic slowing him down. Now the ult thrown out. Snake King starting to melt. They need a stun. They need something. They're not getting much. Plasma field thrown out. Two more dead. Havos gets tired of pushing bottom and decides to go kill everyone. And Dignitas will GG out before the 15-minute mark. 16 to 1 your score. And I think there's no question that Na'Vi are now the heads-on favorites in Group A. No questions. No questions. No and questions. And I'm still predicting that Dignitas goes 7 and 7 and uh, LGD China make a triumphant return. DK's doing well. DK's doing well. LG China perhaps could be on the rise. Apparently D DK had a rough start today, but from what we've been hearing, they've started to bounce back. Uh, I, I don't know who's streaming that one, but at this point, you guys should know. It's either Sheever, Toby, or AC. So you can check those out. But yeah, can we... Or I guess Ben is going to be doing some end game analysis for us. There's not too much to analyze. Okay. Can we just jump to the, uh, the results yeah, and stuff? Let's talk about yeah. Okay, we'll wrap this up super quickly. So, Na'Vi take the series 2-0. They now advance to 10-2 and in the group. They've mm -hmm. got one more best of two tomorrow. That one's against LGD China. It'll be our first match of the day, but they're done for today. So, with that out of the way, we've got Merlitz. Is that your name? Merlitz. Merlini and Blitz are here. Blitz, good well, morning. Good morning. There's not too much about that game. They, they kind of got rolled. They, they definitely got rolled. Well, Razor is like decent versus OD, but I mean, just, just simple outplaying everywhere. Out drafted too. Everyone's okay. picking that today. What, Razor, Razor or OD? Well, he's so good Razor's against OD. Good. OD does very good against, against that hero. Yeah. The yeah. passive and the, the link pretty much gives you... Like a guaranteed damage. like yeah. 80 damage. And he's a natural BKB hero yeah. too, which is I very important versus OD. I feel that every time oh, and, and Razor wins a game, it's not the Razor. It's like everything else. I, I just feel like it's one of those heroes that if you get behind with it early, yeah, yeah. It's, all, it's almost right. impossible to do anything later. Yeah. And I don't feel like it gives you enough of an advantage of a hero to that you can pick it like... Well, he, he just needs yourself. to be put in like a not too unfavorable matchup. Like him versus OD is like decent. Yeah, I and remember, was it Maus that ran it in an offensive tri lane? I can't... It's pretty risky to run him in an offensive tri lane. Yeah. Because yeah. he's actually pretty squishy. And if he doesn't get off a good link... He needs levels. He, he needs levels pretty badly. Yeah, he does. Um, it's not a bad but hero by I, any means. Just looking, like, for this series, for me, because I I think Na'Vi's playing, I mean, obviously they're kicking ass, but the way they're drafting, I feel like I'm watching someone who's thinking several moves ahead in a game of chess against somebody who's just thinking one or two moves ahead. Because yeah. Puppy, like, every single time he's drafting, he's getting the perfect counters to the enemy team, he's getting equally good late game, he's getting way more of the laning stage, and, I mean, mm. if you have that kind of a start that Dignitas did, like, they shouldn't win. And Na'Vi, not only do they have the good start, then they just go and win. So, I mean, what is it with their drafting? Why are they out drafting everyone so hard? Or is this Dignitas driving poorly, though? Do you think the, that's what it is? The first game, it was definitely Dignitas driving poorly. I yeah, mean, the first game. But this yeah, game. Yeah, the second game, I, I mean, they just got outplayed. I, I said that they can't really play the same style, or, like, they have to, like, do something surprising, and they did not. They just tried to take the OD pick, and OD didn't even do that much the first game. But. I mean, they just they just completely shut down Dignitas' picks. I mean, everywhere. but I, I don't think, like, they... Yeah, they got outplayed, but how could they actually win those lanes? Because Razor beats OD mid. I think that's fair to say. Yeah. doesn't matter how much you Astral. Every time you Astral, you get your damage stolen. Yeah. And we you saw, do that we saw him Astraling, and yeah. he just w was not moving. Yeah, and even though he gets out of range, he's already lost his damage. Yeah. And the whole point of OD is to win mid. So, or win your lane. So, Lifestealer getting free farm. You know, there's nothing they can really do about that. They slow down Universe. Their Chen got free jungle farm, and... Then, I mean, the offlane, like, the way they use those Ancients is... <laughs> Dignitas were like, oh crap, they use that strat, we gotta go and ward these, but it didn't even matter when they warded them. Yeah. So, is Dignitas still a top four team in, in Group A? Like, a after this... I mean, Fnatic is... Uh, uh, after seeing a couple of their performances, I still say they're better, even if they lost to DK. Let's look Navi, at the good stuff, Kawa. Navi clearly better yeah. than Dignitas. Kawa, give us the good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Give us the group. Group standings. Boom. So, I mean, they're technically still in the top four. I don't know who their last opponent is. So each of these it might, I think teams will MUFC. play 14 they games. They have to play Fnatic. They have to play, oh, is that it? They, they have to play Fnatic. Who, yeah. is Fna who has MUFC not played yet? Who is to play Fnatic? And uh, apparently LG... Toss have to play... Well, there's still a couple teams with Fnatic. only three games on there. 
or only uh, there's yeah, some L series are still underway. LGD Zenith and DK Mouse versus only. Fnatic is still ongoing. Okay, uh, I believe they already took one game off of D uh, Fnatic and yeah. LGD Zenith. I believe I Zenith. Think, I think they can two a Fnatic. I think DK is actually stronger than them. So it really does ride on Dignitas versus Fnatic and LGD. Who's their last opponent? A Navi. Then that no, one's super uh, important. Yeah, not those, for Navi. Those are really important. I guess it is somewhat important for Navi, but it's more important for because the biggest LGD. difference in the group stage is getting fourth as opposed to anything else. Like first to fourth, I mean, it's it's kind of a big deal being able to pick your opponent, but starting off in the winners bracket is such a huge advantage. So Navi Fnatic looks like they're already in um, like the top four. So who's LGD, pretty solidly. LGD playing against right now? No, they're not playing anyone. They've uh, they have a match coming up. Okay. Versus. Well, they're in the, they're actually in the same same t time slot as Dignitas versus Navi, so the match it should be ongoing. Oh, Zenith. Zenith versus LGD. I think LGD can two oh Zenith. Okay. They're good against mm -hmm. teams that are sloppy and they have okay. They have to they have to two oh Zenith because I assume they they're gonna lose to Navi. So if they two oh Zenith, then they're tied with Dignitas, and it just comes down to well, who is the better man. Well, DK might lose to Fnatic EU and be seven but five as well. They'll still yeah. So the, we might have three seven five. But who's DK's last opponent? Yeah, DK tomorrow they are playing Mouse Sports. I think Mouse? The, I think DK is a lock to finish top four as long as they even if they lose that game. Right. Okay. Because they true. they play Mouse, they should. So, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but based on the way the teams have played, DK should win at least one. DK of definitely two. has the easiest opponent compared to LGD. Yeah. Uh, and Fnatic, if they and if they two zero Fnatic, then they could even make a move for first or second, depending on how LGD plays against Navi. Right. But the way that LGD and Navi are playing, you'd expect Navi to win that 2-0. Yeah. So top three, Navi, Fnatic EU, and most likely DK, and then Dignitas and LGD are, are the ones to be watching. I think those are the tomorrow. two that are at risk right, right now. Of, of and dropping. they both have they both have tough opponents too. Yeah. So Group B, which is coming up next, we have I is it IG versus IG Tongfu? Tong yeah, that's a big. IG Tongfu, and looking at Group B right now, it's very close in the middle. You've got five teams that are within two games of each other. Mm. So, out of these teams, who's got the best shot at advancing? If IG wins that 2-0, then they should be like a lock for top four. Pretty sure. Yeah. They should, if they win that 2-0, they're definitely a lock for top four. If they lose it, then things, six, get, six. things, just, things so, get interesting. Yeah, things yeah. get very interesting. So, Orange, Orange, have they finished their games for today? Orange. No, they have one more. They're they playing, playing? Uh, Rattlesnake. So Orange should probably be eight and four, which is what I predicted after today. Five and one run because they had two pretty easy opponents and they they break one one with IG. Mm. So Orange on track to finish top four, I think. I'm pretty sure they will. Who do they play on the last day? They're playing against Alliance. Oh well, so even then though, even everybody has two losses eight, against Alliance. Eight and six though. <laughs> I, eight and six is good enough for top four in this group. Yeah, I'm pretty it sure. Is. I mean, we could potentially have like five teams be eight and six though, with the way things are shaking up. But I don't know who IG. No, and L well LGD and. Probably not. Who does LGD and play? They play Tongfu. No, they already play Tongfu. They play LGD. And I mean, LGD they play Liquid. Yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. they, they could beat Liquid. I mean, they they two o Tongfu though. That's that was surprising. Yeah, I, I feel like Tongfu's on the outs right now. They lost two. They lost what? Like the Alliance match, okay, but they shouldn't. If you want to be a top four team in this group, you can't get two o. Were they the closest team to actually beating Alliance? Yeah, they were. They they had Alliance. In yeah. fact, yeah, I think Alliance coming back in game one just broke broke the spirit. Yeah, it really did. That second game that was, was painful, pitiful. But I'm, they gave Bulldog Lone Druid. What are you going to do? Didn't uh, somebody else give uh, Bulldog Lone Druid too? And, we, and that person was never seen again. So <laughs> don't, don't give Bulldog. I still think the best strategy against them is to ban out. I, Liquid, no. Actually, one of the games they ban out Lone Druid and Chen, which I think is either that or like Lone Druid and Profit, I think, is ideal. Lone Druid for sure. It's still, you can ban whatever you want against Alliance. That's so they're so they're getting through no matter what, obviously. And yeah. they're gonna get through it. Alliance first, is no like what. Uh, they're not definitely sealed for first. They could technically go. They're not gonna lose six games. But they're they, first place. Yeah. So think, there's three teams that's locked. It's, only, right it's now. only four games left. Four games. They're not yeah. gonna lose. They're four. not gonna lose. There's four, three teams but. that's locked. There's Alliance from Group B, and then the right now the first two seeds. So Navi and Fnatic. They're basically locked. Yeah. In fact, they're mathematically. Locked. Okay. So do we want to make our final predictions on who's gonna advance? Sure. Let's let's do that right now. Let's put everyone on blast. Back to the good stuff. One more to the groups. This is tough. And I would, I mean, Navi, Fnatic, pretty obvious they should advance here. I think DK, and I would say LGD. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to say Dignitas and LGD is going to both finish 7-7. Seven and seven. They're going to play their extra game, and then LG is going to 2-1 Dignitas. Two calling one. it. Is there not How like do you two one them in a best of two? Because Dignitas 2 would LGD. What's that? No, they're playing extra matches. They don't do for that BS tiebreakers. Okay. 
Extra games. If teams tie along the upper and lower bracket, more games will be played to determine C. They didn't say if it's best of three, so who knows? Maybe it's best of one, maybe it's best of five. Damn. Probably best of three, though. Best of three, hopefully. Um, that's my top four. That's Lumi's. What do you guys think for Group A? Yeah, Navi, Fnatic, DK, LZD. Okay. I'm pretty confident that's, about that. Yeah. Let's... I'm going to go... Wait, so who does Zignitas have to play left? Fnatic EU. They have to play Fnatic EU and then they're done? Yeah. And LGD has to play who? Uh, they're playing... They're playing... Some... Zenith right now? Zenith and they're right also now. playing Navi tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, then I'm going to take Dignitas over LGD. Okay. So I think Dignitas has a better chance of beating Fnatic than LGD I mean, has the way a you can think about Navi. it. The way you can think about it is, does Dignitas have a better chance of taking a game off of Fnatic, or does LGD have a better yeah. chance of taking a game off of Fnatic? That's exactly what just Ben said, but over. Yeah. Yes. That's I, exactly, I that's it. literally <laughs> word for word almost. <laughs> well, I already started to say it right now. LD, don't listen. You know, buddy. <laughs> yeah. I remember I was casting with him, and I said something to him, and then he repeated it three seconds later. And I was hey, like, that's funny. How that's do happened do with me literally every time I've cast with every single one of you at least five times a cast. So. And me. There you go. And me. Get no. your ears clean. Are we, are we even, though? No, I think you guys still owe me like 50. It's okay, though. You still owe me a meal. I mean, that is a good way to think of it, though. A meal? I, okay. I'll buy you a meal. You can't fix this one easily. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, really? Oh, here we go. Oh. Whoa. Getting a cake? Yeah. Happy birthday, Lumi! Is this from DPM? Yeah. You got to show the camera to design. I, I'm Without afraid to lift it up. One of it just yeah. Come falls on, Calvin, down. You're our cake showman. And on the bottom, oh, it damn. says... Happy birthday, Happy birthday Lumi, written in blue. It's covered by the Tongfu Game 1 banner, but it is there. It is written. We have a Dang. Dota 2 cake, thanks to Sing, also known as DPM, in celebration for Lumi's. How old are you now? I'm 25. Thank 25. you, Sing. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Lumi. Buddy. Woo! Are we eating this later? The know. Chinese teams are is not giving chocolate? you a good birthday present, We still have, present, like, though. 20 sushi rolls for you. Yeah, we have to eat those, too. Okay, so we've done Group A. Let's do Group B. Okay, Group B's, I think, is a little bit tougher. I'll start first this time, guys. Okay. And... On a limb, I'm going to say Alliance is going to finish at the top. A bold statement. And I think they'll actually finish undefeated, too, considering their last two opponents. I think they've uh, run the gauntlet. And then I think IG, even though they have four losses, they've looked relatively impressive to me. And then Orange. Have you seen their loss against LGD? Dude, what? are you ever going to give that up? No. <laughs> Wait, so which ones do you say? Alliance? Oh, Alliance, IG, and I'd say Orange and... Oh god, Wait, we have LGD didn't have to play Team Liquid, right? Mm. Alliance, IG, Orange, and who? Oh, uh, probably LGD. Oh, you're good. Yeah. Okay, uh, Merlini? I don't actually know who Orange has to play. I think that has to... Do you know, do you know uh, Orange's schedule? Or, or regardless. I'll go with Alliance. I think that... By the way, LG in right now... Everyone's going to the Alliance. I we think, we, we I think IG is going to beat out Tongfu, so I'll, I'll say IG. And then I th actually think LG in... LGDN is going to be out Team Liquid. Orange has to play Rattlesnake, and then they play Alliance tomorrow. So Orange is like guaranteed eight and four to me. Okay, so or eight and eight and six. I mean, which yeah. Means they so Alliance, IG, Orange, and LGDN. Tongfu, they were starting off really strong, but they don't. They they just broke their spirit after losing to Alliance. And Liquid, I think, is actually going to lose to LGDN. LGDN has been looking really really strong. Yeah, basically those three teams at the top now, I think, are pretty much locks to move on. I'm assuming the unthinkable doesn't happen and Orange doesn't drop a game to Rattlesnake, which they really should not. Uh, and then it's just a matter of Liquid, LGD, and Tongfu duking it out. Yeah. Okay. Well, that being said, guys, we're going to take like a minute break here. We're going to come back and we'll be live with our final set of the day. It'll be IG versus Tongfu. Very important match in Group B. Stay tuned. <laughs>